I solemnly pledge, I solemnly pledge that I shall always do know is that if it wasn't for, for the Jamaat, if it wasn't for Khadam al I would be so much worse off. Like, I, I cannot describe and explain how blessed I feel. Country, Country and nation. And nation. A nation cannot be reformed without first the reformation of its youth. A profound statement, one which even after many decades still resonates as being entirely true. At a time when young men, and particularly young Muslim men, are faced with intense scrutiny, when the media narrative would suggest that this generation is full of angry, disillusioned young men, when crime, gang culture, drug abuse and alcoholism are still rife, one struggles to see how such reformation is possible. Yet there is a community whose youth are embedded with the spirit of sacrifice, respect and tolerance. They are motivated by an understanding of Islam that is peaceful and inclusive, one which mirrors that which existed at the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad This group of young men are known as Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya, the servants of Ahmadiyya established in December 1938. The founder of this youth organization was the second Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad radiallahu anhu, also known as Hazrat Muslim Aud, the promised reformer. Hazrat Muslim Aud radiallahu anhu was very, very bright and very high in his estimations and visions. The programs in his mind, there were so many. He kept the whole community so busy. Particularly, he was coming back again and again to the youth, that you are the leaders of future. So therefore, you have to get all the qualities and would advise them to work very hard. So that's why he has started this Khudam al And he was personally guiding them and helping them to carry out their work. As a youngster, his special companionship with his father, the promised Messiah, wasalam, which extended over 19 years, cultivated in him a unique awareness of divine matters. His extraordinary attributes that were divinely prophesied meant that he was able to see the movement at both a holistic and a granular level. All these organizations they were established for the purpose that the whole community should be activated through their auxiliary branches. And if one branch does not show much sign of life, then the other should wake up. This divine visionary understood the needs and the value of the youth. So he created an organization that encouraged young men to be ambitious in all their affairs, but never without piety, to cultivate their physical strengths, but never without dignity, and to serve the wider society whilst remembering that their primary objective is to attain nearness to their Creator, Allah the Almighty. Another beautiful thing about MK is that it's got and so many role models, so many people you can look up to, um, you know, positive role models that are, have exceeded in their field, in their, in their individual departments, um, because MKA, like I, meant, like I said, is split up into you know, a, a number of different uh, segments. Every single one of those segments, people work voluntarily, completely voluntarily. Not a single penny are they given. It's purely out of the, the love for the Jamaat and wanting to help people and mankind and, and, and humanity. That's purely why, why we are a part of this community. So Hazrat Muslim Al created a structure for Majlis Qadam al which is the youth arm of the uh, organization in, in terms of the Jamaat. And he created a structure top down and, um, in terms of um, the Sadr, which is the president, then with directors, which are the Motameen, and, and then the regional Qaideen and the local Qaideen. That structure you may see in multiple organizations, but the vision of um, Hazrat Muslim at that time was so vast and far sighted that he understood what was required and the mechanisms that were required to propel an organization to where we see it today. Regarding Qudam al Huzur has spoken very extensively on so many occasions, Khudam Ijtama and others. He has been always telling the youth of the community that you are the people 
because of your young age you have to play a very important role in the progress of the community the second khalifa's vision lives on today on the publication of fazl umar a biography of the second khalifa hazrat khalifatul masih may allah strengthen his hand wrote to the then sadr speaking on the entrapments of modern society and its relationship to the decline of the morals of the youth hazur commented ahmadi youth on the other hand are privileged to belong to a spiritual jamaat which is protected by the shield of the institution of khilafat ahmadiyya thus ahmadi youth of today must not allow negligence of this great message to hinder their march onwards as their visions scale the height of the heavens and the depths of the earth the beauty that um, we have within the jamaat is that the sadr majlis is where and majlis qadam lem be is independent and they report directly to his khalif to masi and one of the things that um, from time immemorial and, and people will realize is that has a muslim out himself who acted as a sadr majlis but was also khalif at the same time you can tell from the love that he had of the organization and the youngsters the importance that he felt that needed to be based on the youth and if you imagine that now in terms of has a cliff to masi has that direct supervision and direct guidance is given to the sadr majlis you know i've got so many stories of you know meeting duty right 13 14 years ago when i was um, serving vip guests in jalsa and there was one night when some guests came late at night they were come where they were arriving from and um they had no bedding left and there was only us guys the the, the workers that had our um you know have we had mattresses and um pillows and quilts and stuff and we gave that up for the guests and we didn't think anything about it but it was a few years later when i had to write my cv <laughs> and then someone reminded me you know you you've shown a lot of hospitality skills and then think of a, something specific that has happened in in that in, in environment and i remember that and i remember yeah like i did that and that's i'm not i'm not saying that at all to gloat but i'm saying that that's what khudam al ambiya has taught me to give up my life for the sake of my faith country and religion what is the standard of obedience and dedication that its members should follow it is the example of the promised reformer himself when he made his historic dedication at the demise of the promised messiah la salatu wassalam even if all the people leave you and i am left alone i will stand by you and shall face all opposition and onslaughts against your mission i just find that absolutely incredible like you know even the the, the street cleaning that I spoke about on new year's day and i'm telling my colleagues and friends about it i'm showing them the articles that have been published in the media and uh, it's not and, and when i told them yeah that's not just london by the way that's not just merton where where i did it you find all these articles up in Gillingham up in Manchester up in Bradford everywhere and the hold on it's not just there it's across the globe everywhere in Africa in Belize yeah you, know, you know in Germany every single country where there is MKA they've had instructions to do that to show the world that this is what Islam is about this is what Ahmadiyya is about and you will not find that anywhere and how incredible is it that we are following one voice in those days uh, and some previous years I remember that whenever yeah, there used to be a flood in some areas of Pakistan, Madlis Khudamul Amadiya for many many years that used to be a very mighty force to immediately rush to that area where the help is needed, and people who were uh, you know uh, encircled by the water in small villages, some rocks, mountains here and there, anything high above the level of the flood water. people were sitting there without food without shelter without clothes so the khudam ul amdi used to reach them and this is a key area in terms of where khudam can make a, a difference a tangible difference so some of the things that the activities that are done there are charity challenges that you might have seen collection um for very different british charities and when i'm talking british i'm talking just the uk i'm focusing here but the us canada um indonesia bangladesh india pakistan they're all doing this type of activity um helping the homeless feeding the homeless um shelter homes soup kitchens um runs and walks for different types of uh, occasions and and uh, fundraising activities 
Um, they're also going out abroad and, and getting involved with other NGOs or other charity organizations and helping them. Again, I cannot, it's, it's just, inc- I find it absolutely incredible that as a Muslim old, um, as a, he was 25 when he became Khalifa, right? 25. Became Khalifa at 25. He's three years younger than me. And to lead the whole world, I find apps like, honestly, I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about it. And then he set up MKA and he, he must have foreseen how great the, the, the Jamaat was going to be. He must have foreseen how big and how impactful the Khudam were going to be. One thing I remember is that when he passed away in 1965, at that time there was a newspaper called The Light, published from Lahore, not by Ahmadis. But there was a very interesting article on the demise of Hazrat Muslim Maud And the title is such which I cannot forget. The title by a non Ahmadi writer, it said, The Great Nation Builder. I think in three words, he mentioned quite a lot. Hazrat Muslim Maud Razilatalanu was really a great nation builder. This was a brief look at the divine foresight of Hazrat Muslim Maud radiallahu anhu in establishing Majlis Khudam al Ahmadiyya. This dynamic institution continues to serve the Jamaat and society as a whole across the world. May Allah enable us all to live up to the vision and objectives of this most blessed divine personality.